Evan Mobley is a player who on the surface might not appear to have taken the massive leap people thought he would in year 2. When looking at his numbers compared to his rookie year and sophomore year, he has seen some improvement. I would say that's fair, but the numbers haven't taken that massive leap that we have seen from other bigs as talented as Evan Mobley in the past. Look at the likes of Carl Anthony Towns, Nikola Jokic, and Anthony Davis as three big examples of that in modern basketball. Granted, Mobley is in a different situation than those three players were when they were in year two of their NBA careers, but regardless, the numbers don't tell the full story with Mobley, because I think he's way better than his numbers So, Mobley is the definition of what modern basketball is, a versatile player on both ends of the floor. And considering how good he is, it's really insane to think about the fact that he's not even a top two option on this Cavs team. What stands out most for me is Evan Mobley's physical traits. He's 7 feet tall, 215 pounds, 7 foot 4 inch wingspan. He does still need to add more functional strength to his frame, but considering it's only year 2 of his NBA career, I'm not too worried about it. I think realistically he can get up to like 235 pounds, which I think will be enough. On top of height, long arms, and a frame that definitely can still be filled out, he has legit wing-like movement skills. He's a very fluid athlete from both a north to south straight line and east to west lateral perspective. It's these traits and movement skills that are the base for his versatility on both ends of the floor. Offensively, Mobley is mostly used as a play finisher. He has good hands, he's a good athlete, he has good movement skills and body control, has good touch around the basket. On top of that, he does have skills to improvise as a play finisher as well. It's not just as simple as catching a dump off or a rim run and putting up the shot. He has good counters when the initial look gets shot off because he has good footwork and a decent handle. He's shooting 75.7% on 5.9 attempts per game within 5 feet. He's shooting 77.5% on 5.5 restricted area attempts per game. He's shooting 61.5% on 9.5 overall paint area attempts per game. So not only is Mobley showcasing the traits and skills as a play finisher and scorer in the paint, he also is showing he's efficient in this area as well. I also think Evan Mobley is a really good passer. He has good feel for the game in this area, he has good vision. He's not some big time creative passer, but I do think he makes really good reads. Passes well on the roll, passes well from the post, passes well from top to key. He's a good passer in both an on-ball and off-ball situation, and is a positive as a passing playmaker. Given what he is as a scorer, being a plus passer is beneficial. He's averaging close to 3 assists per game now, and I think with progressing, it can get to 5 assists per game. The Cavs are never going to ask Mobley to be a big time playmaker considering they have one of the best playmakers in basketball in Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell was a good playmaker for the level of school he is. But Mobley being a good passer does expand the Cavs offense from an advantage creation perspective overall. Now the area I believe is a swing factor for Mobley is his shooting. He's only averaging 2.6 combined 3 point and mid range attempts per game which he shoots 30.7% on those combined 3-point and mid-range attempts. He's shooting 42% on 1.2 mid-range attempts per game. He's shooting 21.3% on 1.4 3-point attempts per game. And he's shooting 33.2% on 3.8 total jump shot attempts per game. Not the best signs from a numbers perspective to say the least. But I do see encouraging signs on tape. I think his form is fine. I think he has good shooting touch. And the flashes are evident on tape. It's more about gaining a rhythm when it comes to Mobley in my opinion. And also just having the confidence to consistently take jumpers. I think this is partially due to his wiring as a player. Which I'll talk about more later. He's not someone that really hunts shots. But I don't think that he has like bad shooting indicators or he's afraid to shoot. 
I just think he's more worried about making the right play. And as of right now, like taking a bunch of three pointers and tough mid range shots isn't the right play given this Cavs team. I don't think Mobley will ever be a big time suitor, but I do think the signs are encouraging enough to believe he can be a respectable suitor, which given his versatility in other areas of offense, I think will be enough. But what truly makes Evan Mobley special is the defense. Mobley has potential to be the best defensive player in basketball. He had the best defensive rookie season I've ever seen. I thought he was all defense good as a rookie, and I think he's been all defense good this season. He's a monster soft blocker. Because of his movement skills, he can play multiple defensive coverages. He can drop and head, hold his own on switches. He's a super smart, high field defensive player. Good defensive communicator. I think he can be a leader on that end of the floor. Pretty good foul discipline. I think he will only get better as he continues to add more functional strength to his frame. And for as versatile as he is on offense, I think he's even more versatile on defense, which really says something. Now, the biggest flaw with Evan Mobley to me is his wiring as an offensive scorer. I don't think Mobley will ever be a big time scorer in the NBA. It's really just not how he's wired. I'm not saying Mobley is afraid to score or is a non-factor on offense because that's far from the case. He has had games where he is aggressive as a scorer, but it's not a consistent aggression. Mobley has never been a big time scorer that hunts for sides and that's something that dates back to his high school days. If you combine high school, AAU, college, and the NBA, he's only averaged over 20 points a game once at any of those levels. And while I do think Mobley has the intangibles and the skills to be a big time scorer, I don't think it's something to worry about when it comes to the fact that he isn't. Again, it's not like he's a bad scorer or a fake to score. It's just that he's more content being the second or third option as a scorer, which given this Cavs roster, it's fine. I don't think Mobley needs to be a 25 plus point per game scorer for this Cavs team to be a contender. I think Garland and Mitchell is enough high volume self creation when it comes to scoring for the Cavs. I could be wrong about this because Mobley is one of those talents that is so good he could have outlier development jumps, but realistically, I think Mobley will end up being an 18 to 20 point per game scorer, which given everything else in his game, being at the level that it is, I think is really good. Evan Mobley is someone I believe can be an all NBA level player at his best. At his best, I think he could average around 20 to 22 points per game, 10 plus rebounds per game, 4 assists per game, a steal a game, and 2 plus blocks per game. That's someone that, given the fact that he'll be like all defense level good and defensive player of the year candidate, offensively, those stats combined with that, that could be a top 10 player in the NBA one day. He's extremely versatile and has a chance to be the most versatile player in the league, as well as one of the three to five best defenders in the league, considering he's already one of the 10 best defenders in the league. If that's what your third option is, that really speaks to how special your team is. And I think that will be the case with the Cavs. I think when you're talking about overall value as a player, Mobley will probably be first to second if he hits his ceiling. Uh, but when you look at the Cavs roster, he's probably still going to be like the third scoring option, which given everything else he does is fine, but also speaks to how good your team is as a roster that a player this good will be the third option on offense. Mobley is a player that has a super high foil. Not only because of his feel for the game, which among bigs entering the league, he has the highest feel for the game I've seen in this regard, but also because he's proven it already. He's proven he can be a good player. The floor for Evan Mobley is a 15 point per game, 8 rebound per game, 3 assists per game player that's also all defense good. Which is what he was as a rookie. 
If that's the worst possible outcome for your NBA career, and that's the worst season of your NBA career, or likely will be the worst season of your NBA career down the road, that's really insane. Mobley isn't like most top three picks in the one done era. He's proven to be a player ready to be highly impactful on a winning team from the jump, when it usually takes young players a few years before they are ready to contribute to winning basketball. The fact that Mobley has proven since his rookie season he can be a productive, positive impact player on a winning team speaks to how special he is as a basketball player. The numbers might just be quote unquote good, and it's not like his numbers are bad, his numbers are actually like above average starting center level, but I do think at the same time, his impact as a basketball player is so much bigger than any of his numbers will ever tell you. But that's the end of this video. If you made it to this point, thank you so much. Again, if you haven't already, like, subscribe, and notification bell be notified whenever I release a video. I make videos about basketball all the time. And if you like basketball, I really think you'd love this channel. And doing those two things would help me out a lot. It makes sure that more people find the video, helps me out in the YouTube algorithm, and helps me grow as a channel so I can make more content for you guys consistently in the future. I love to hear what you think about Evan Mobley in the comment section below. How good do you think he could be? Do you think he could be a starter? Do you think he's just going to be an average starter? Do you think that he could be someone that could be the best defensive player in basketball? I would just love to hear all of that in the comment section below. With that being said, have a nice day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.